a new edition of Credit Matters TV. I'm Mercedes Cangueiro, analyst at the Financial Institution Department at S&P Global Ratings. S&P Global Ratings has recently published its full analysis of the banking industry country risk assessment on Peru and changed its economic risk trend to stable from negative. To talk about the highlights of the article, we have Cynthia Coenfreu, sector lead in the Financial Institution Department. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Mercedes. Why have you changed the economic risk trend to stable from negative? We have revised our economic risk trend to stable from negative because we believe the economic imbalances have diminished and credit growth has remained steady in 2016. And we don't expect credit to grow much faster than GDP in the next two years. This is because internal demand remains subdued. On the other hand, property prices have softened and economic growth prospects are improving. Why credit risk in the economy remains very high? Because although foreign currency lending has significantly decreased, mainly due to the Peruvian central bank incentives, it remains relatively high at about 28% of total loans. In addition, we believe the financial sector is exposed to a significant share of lending to cyclical sectors, such as small and medium enterprises, which is about 25% of total loans. The current deterioration in asset quality is mainly due to this sector. We expect asset quality to continue slightly deteriorating by the end of 2016 and stabilize next year. What is your view of industry risk in Peru? We consider industry risk for banks operating in Peru is in general lower than that of its peers. We believe that Peru has a sound regulatory framework with ample supervisory coverage and periodic risk-based supervision under a highly professional regulator. Both the Central Bank of Peru and the SBS, which regulates banks and insurance companies, are very active. In addition, the SBS has made significant progress to align the country to Basel III standards, although not in full, as some changes require Congress approval. Which is the main limiting factor of the Vigra of Peru? The main limiting factor remains the GDP per capita that is likely to reach just above $6,000 by the end of 2016 a value that is lower than that of most of peers. Between 2004 and 2014, Peru achieved consistent and robust growth thanks to commodity revenues, prudent macroeconomic policies and price stability. Real GDP growth averaged 6.7% between 2010 and 2013, placing Peru among the fastest growing economies in the region. However, lower commodity prices have slowed economic growth in 2014 and 2015, and we expect the country to grow about 4% over the next two years. Although this growth is relatively high comparing to regional peers, it is much lower than that experienced prior 2014. Thank you, Cynthia, and thank you all for joining us on another edition of Great Matters TV.